You know, I've been thinking about something. I feel review scores are probably the least helpful information that you can provide for a story. If you think about it, the review score was meant to give you probably the most rough idea of what the reviewer thinks about it. But there is a few problems with this idea. There is a lot of people that use this 1 to 10 scale but use it very differently. I'll be explaining my points to give you insight on what I mean. There will be people that use 1 to 10, 1 to 100, or 1 to whatever, but every single one of these scales will have a problem. How about the people that say 10 is a perfect score, but it's impossible to be perfect so it can't be 10. They'll have to give a 9 or a 9.5, but what if they find something better, 9.6? Well, then they could just keep going until they give a 9.9. .9. What comes after that if something comes up better? 9.99? 9.999? Just keep adding a 9 to the end? Your review score will start looking a little bit strange when you get into these very high decimal amounts. Okay, so let's just give it a 10 then. But what if you find a movie that did the same thing but did it better? Are you also going to give that a 10? Well now we have a case of two movies with a 10, but you think one is better, and yet they still had the same score. If it wasn't a 10 and it was a 5, you would be able to give it a higher score like 5.1, but you can't really make it go higher than 10 if you're using a 1 to 10 scale. So in a situation like this, you have two options. Either you break your system and you say it's a 10.5 or 11, or, you make your other scores go down a little bit so that one show can actually be a 10. But if you lower every other score just so that one can be a 10, what about the ones that you gave the lowest score possible, a 1? The shows that you gave a 1 would now be below a 1, even though it's a scale of 1 to 10, and now you broke your system in the other way. So how would you decide which ones get lowered? Would there be a cutoff point for what gets lowered? Could those be lowered to a point that is lower than the other scores that were below the cutoff point? What about lowering them to the cutoff point? Would that even be fair to the shows? Why would this show being created suddenly lower the quality of the other shows? Well actually the only reason it would lower the quality of the original show is because it changes your standards on how the show should be. Your standards changing would actually be a good reason for you to lower their score. But what about the ones that are already rated a 1? We still have the 1 problem. How about we go into the other way people use the rating system and talk about that. There are people that take an average by putting into categories such as stories, characters, sound, animation, and personal enjoyment. A show can be considered decent if they have a terrible story, average or below average character, great animation, great sound, and near nothing for personal enjoyment. Now they didn't even enjoy it, but with something like that this can be considered at least average. How about the shows without a story? And instead about the story, it's about their normal lives, like Slice of Life. Why would a story like that be on the same scale as Fate Zero when it's clear it's all about the journey and not actually about the story, or about how their day-to-day -day lives are? What's even worse than the people that try to do this kind of review score is the ones that do the review score and cut out personal enjoyment. Now the show isn't considered just average, it's considered pretty good even though he didn't even like the show. How about a different type of review scale? The scale starting at 10 points and losing points if it does something majorly wrong and gaining points when it does something majorly right. The problem with this method is that it would make a movie about skipping rocks a 10 out of 10 because there's nothing wrong with the film, it's just boring as hell. Some people may try to look into a deeper meaning of skipping the rocks and be like each skip is a milestone in one's life. Some try to get to the other side of the lake, skipping across the water. The water represents your problems with life. If you can skip across it, then you can overcome these problems. If you fall into the water, the problems have overcome you, and your problems have won. But some will live on to skip to the other side, and that is where you'll find salvation. Or some people may try to think each skip is Morse code or some way of communicating that no one has done before, so they're trying to figure out a way to see what it is trying to say. The creator will probably think you're crazy and say, sometimes skipping rocks is just skipping rocks, sometimes a pencil is just a pencil. Even if we use the same review score and started at a 5 instead of a 10, that would still make this movie average. Some common sense and emotional logic would have to come into play, since that yes, it didn't do anything wrong, but it was a terrible movie and the score is going to reflect it. This brings me to the final type of review score that I want to talk about. The final type of review score is an emotional review score. 
That is when the review score is 100% on how you felt about it and how much you enjoyed it. This is probably the most honest review score that I see around. It is showing exactly how much you like a show or hate a show with all of its pros and cons. They will have explained everything that they have found wrong and everything they have found right with the story picking it apart piece by piece. And after all that, now they have to give it a rating. In front of a lot of people and saying even with all of his flaws I still enjoyed it this much or with everything it did right I hated it this much still. There is still a little bit of a problem doing like this. How you feel about a show or topic can change. Maybe one day is an 8 or in the next day is a 7.5 or a 9. Or how about when you rewatch it and find out it isn't as good as you thought. You started to notice stuff in the rewatch of the show that you didn't see last time and that just either dropped or raised the score. Remember, you are a reviewer trying to explain it to them. If it is something you didn't know the first time, or something that is subtle that it isn't supposed to be noticed the first time, should that even be counted? Should the first time emotional review be the overall and should never change the review score because a lot of people only watch the show one time? Should the review score change on your second, third, or even tenth time watching it? The review score is you trying to say how good the show actually was to the audience. Would this mean you need two review scores? One would be how you feel the first time watching it, and the other would be how you feel now. If I was going to relate to this type of review, I would say the first time I watched Sword Online, I was going to say it was about 4.5. But if I had to give a number for the now, that would be more of a 3. Why is that? Because I've watched it so many times that I no longer want to watch it. Or at the very least, don't want to rewatch it. I only kept rewatching it because my friends wanted to watch it with me. If the last few times I watched it, I watched it when I didn't even want to watch it, would it be fair to base my experience off the last few times that I watched it? That would be me going into a show with the mentality already knowing that I'm not going to have fun, so it actually just makes the experience worse for me. If I feel the score is a 4.5 the first time I watched it and then I rewatch it and have the change inside the score, I feel I should have two scores up and then giving a little context of why it changed since the first time I watched it. This can happen with any show, and it can go up or down, just like when I watched Grin Lagan, the first time I watched it I feel maybe it was about a 7.5, and the second time I watched it I feel it was an 8.5. Would it then be fair to give Gurren Lagan the second score when you're trying to relate it for people who haven't even watched it yet? When giving out a review score, this is stuff the reviewer has to take into account. Some people may now be thinking, what is the significance between the review score now? By now you may think the way I'm describing it would mean I think the review score does nothing and should never be shown. But hold up, that is not true. The review score still has some use. You'll see a whole bunch of people that agree with your review score, and you'll also see a whole bunch of people that will disagree with it. They will be talking about it, spreading it, having conversations about it, agreeing with it, disagreeing with it. But ultimately, from what I see is that it will give me insight. Insight into their minds, their brains, how they think, and what they feel about the show. If they can go and point out all the flaws inside the show and still say that they can enjoy it, that can be fascinating in its own right. The number shows what they really feel about the show. In all honesty, the review score shows us more about the person rather than the show itself. And that is the importance of the review score, in my opinion. Because after all that is said and done, and at the end of the day, we are a community. And that number is a deeper understanding on how they feel about the show. Apparently I skipped over a paragraph of lines and this is just me saying what I forgot to add. When rating the score and seeing the problems with it, the reviewer decides whether or not it drops or adds to the score. Some things will be, yeah, that drops the score because it's objectively wrong and it makes no sense plot-wise. Some things can also be taste, like I dislike it when people do this. The reviewer needs to take it all to account for the final added up, but there is still the fact of how much does it lower or raise the review score. People could say that a bad ending or an ending that makes no sense destroys the story, therefore it makes it a 2, because there was no point in showing the story if the story makes no sense. But other people could find it barely damaging for the overall story enjoyment, and so it only lowers it a little bit. Also, retconning. The reviewer needs to decide whether or not it's a good retconning or a bad retconning, but not just say it's a good retconning because it makes sense. 
If we look at the Naruto retconning with Kaguya, it is a bad retconning because yes, it can make some sense, but ultimately you can't rewatch the show and enjoy it anywhere near as much. Because everything that anyone ever does inside the show was all planned by Zetsu. Everything. Even the villains with their own motivations, goals in life, and try to outsmart everyone. Nope, Zetsu was actually the one behind all that. Madara Uchiha? Pfft, get out of here, it was all Zetsu, man. It is possible to have good retconning, but it can be hard to tell which is good and which is bad retconning because it can make sense, but it's all up to the viewer if they see it as good retconning. Black Zetsu can be seen as good retconning because it builds up Kaguya, but I dislike it because it undermines every other character inside the show. So yes, yeah, some things can be objectively right and wrong, but there are still some cases up to the interpretation of the viewer whether or not it was good or bad. This is why there needs to be explanations inside reviews, so that people can get an idea of what's inside the story so they can tell whether it's good or bad rather than someone just saying it's bad because it was their point of view. Uh, I already did the ending for the video, but this little added note kind of ruined it, so... As always, thanks for watching.